I think the writer actually was was a fan of what, something that I released um, in 2014 and came to me with a really specific request of doing a cover of a Brian Wilson song and in my style. So it was, it was a real kind of like dream job, to be honest, but kind of bizarre as well. Uh, so I'm called Elizabeth and I make music under the name of Gazelle Twin. Um, I'm a composer and a producer and I also perform live. Uh, my music is kind of dark electronica. I also compose for film and TV. Um, it goes anywhere from sort of choral music um, to film soundtracks. I grew up with Morricone soundtracks, John Williams soundtracks. They're still kind of the bedrock of what I love about being a composer and what music I love to listen to. But then it goes anywhere to Prince or to Throbbing Gristle, uh, punk. I kind of take in everything and everything, anything and everything. I love kind of all music. Yeah, do you know, I've, I've seen the, the college today in the performance spaces and the studios and I've just been totally blown away. I've met some of the students as well who are lovely and it just seems like a really well kitted out, really supportive environment and something that I'm really in admiration of. I wish I'd had access to something like this when I was studying because there wasn't much like that at the time when I went to uni. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. It's an amazing place. Feels feels like you're in a professional setting, like a production suite where commercial stuff's being made. So that's, that's pretty exciting. So I, a few years ago, I was, um, I was approached by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails and he wanted to have a chat with me. This is all I knew, you just wanted to have a chat on the phone with me, not a mobile landline. And um, so I got ready for the call and there was Trent on the other line, on the other end of the line. And I just had this very casual chat with him and also Atticus Ross, who obviously makes music with, who I didn't know was on the phone, actually, he was listening in. Um, and they invited me to remix uh, a track they've produced for Halsey, um, who's a US artist. I'd never heard of her, to be honest, um, but they've produced this amazing album. And uh, yeah, so I was invited to remix that track, which was, which was really nice, really cool. Um, I think it's always about um, trusting your instincts and your gut. And um, there are gonna be challenges and there's gonna be you're going to feel like you're pulled in certain ways that you might not feel comfortable doing. Some of those are good, some of those are bad. Um, so it's about sort of having a strong base and a network of people to always depend on who you trust and to connect with, share, share your experience. Because um, I think working in a cre any creative industry, but especially music, it can be quite a physical toll and a mental toll. And there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of expectation and there's a lot of highs and lows. So you just need to always kind of be able to ground yourself whenever you can um, and you know that includes not taking stuff for granted as well and just sort of always you know making sure you're making the most out of something but but keeping yourself in check and making sure you're always going with those gut instincts because um, I think when I started out I I know that my opportunities grew when I was sort of trusting that more so I would say that's probably the main thing and I use Ableton to create everything and have done since 2009 when I first got, got it. And um, it's a kind of foolproof music create, creation software production. It's not necessarily industry standard in, across the board, like it's great for live stuff, but for me it's like my, my thing. I, I, I don't see myself sort of stepping out of that, using that. Um, anytime soon. It's a really intuitive piece of kit, but um, obviously, yeah, I make electronic music, so it kind of works that way, but I also sing, so, you know, my voice is quite integral to that as well. Oh, I mean, there's absolutely going to be a, a benefit, and there always is a benefit in, in making a network wider and connecting wider and connecting cities. Absolutely, um, you know, the south with the north, almost North Midlands is is really good thing. And you know, in London, you've got some of the major recording studios, you know, and, and production houses, um, where film and TV, almost always, stuff that's being made in the UK is mixed in very small corner of Soho in London, you know, all of these different studios. So 
you know, to have connections there is really important. But I think equally having that exchange with, with the Midlands as well and just making sure that we're not just getting people from London, doing these, you know, getting into these kind of um, opportunities is, is really important. I'm really happy to carry on with, with you know, I'm at a really good place now. I'm really, it's really exciting. I'm, I'm able to sort of choose projects that I want to work on. Um, I can take on as much or as little as, as I want. Um, just to keep going is amazing. You know, it's, it's taken me most of my life to get to the point where I'm able to do that. But actually, I'm really also, I've started to do more mentoring and more um, sort of talks in colleges and, and unis, and I'm really enjoying that too. It's sort of kind of meeting people that are coming up, you know, the next generation that are coming up with, you know, there's this new music, new sounds, and, and I love being able to sort of, yeah, meet those people and do, do more of that as well, because it it's, can be quite a lonely, isolating job when you're just doing it on your own, which I do. So I love that. That's a really positive, you know, path to follow, I think, as well.